Hello my lovely people, welcome to my channel. My name is Janet. Today we're gonna to be doing a 20 minute all standing Pilates workout for my beginners or anyone who is coming back to Pilates after a period of time. No equipment is required today and there will be no jumping so it's really safe for your knees and joints. If you enjoy these type of workouts and you want more beginner stuff or something that is a bit more low impact or all standing, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. Definitely like this video if you enjoyed yourself and subscribe to my channel as it will really help my channel to grow over time. Now let's get started. All right, team, let's start standing up. The first move will just be a side touch. Stepping one leg out to the side and bringing it in. Arms reaching forward and back. So each move today will be going for 50 seconds on with a 10 seconds rest. Feel free to keep going or take a longer rest if you need to, especially if you're brand new to just exercising. Just get that body moving, nice and light and limber in the legs. Great, coming into your 10 seconds rest. We're just marching on the spot and moving over just to the left hand side. We're going to do a double step touch now. Arms now opening out to the side. Step out, step out, and then step out, step out. Nice and simple. Same move as before. We're just doubling it up here. Moving the arms always just to help lift the heart rate a little bit more and warm up through your whole body. Keep your knees always a little bit bent for me just so it keeps it nice and safe for your joints. And pull your belly button into the spine there to activate your core. Good, marching on the spot there. Alright, so we're going to do one leg steps out to the side and the arm is going to sweep above the head and across the chest. So we go forward, forward and then arms reach up. If it feels a bit too coordinated with the change of the arm, just keep moving the arm in whichever direction you feel you can manage. Or you can always pop the hands onto the hips and ignore the arms completely and just work out the legs. Once you've got it going on or you've done this a few times, you're just taking the arms across the chest twice and then reaching up to the roof twice. Sweep, sweep, lift, lift is all you're doing with the arms there. The legs stay exactly the same. Stepping out nice and wide, light on the toes, tapping to the side. Good, marching on the spot there. All right, I'm turning my body to the right side. My left leg is just gonna tap in and out. Stay bendy in your right leg because you want to start to build up the muscle in your stabilizers. Mm, sometimes you might fall over like I did a little bit there. Concentration sometimes wavers, but once you've got it, running the arms with the legs it's like you're running on the spot there tap in tap out Stay nice and light Good, and then marching on the spot. All right, so the move is gonna be like a double tap at the back and then you bring it back in. So it slows down, hands onto the hips. I tap, tap my foot and then I bring it in. Tap, tap, step in, tap, tap. So it's like I'm just hitting a button at the back of me with my left leg, tap, tap, in, 
or like you're squishing something underneath the toes, squish, squish, and back in. Pushing it into sand, double times and in. It's like you've always, like almost made a mistake stepping back, whoop, and then you bring it back in. Standing leash just start to get a little bit warmer as that muscle warms up. Good, all right, marching on the spot. So we're gonna go into a squat positioning, taking your right heel up and then keeping your left heel nice and flat, the legs nice and wide, wider than your shoulders. And then we're just gonna drop 50% of the way down. Hopefully your muscles now are starting to warm up a little bit so that you can bring it into your depth. Of course, if your knees are a little bit uncomfortable today, you don't have to go as low. You can also drop your right heel down if your calves are not liking this movement. But this is just to take the stability out a little bit and make you work your stabilizers and also your calves. Bulking up those cars if that's what you wish. Great, and marching on the spot, keeping your legs nice and wide. All right, we're gonna pop the hands behind the head. We're gonna twist it out into an oblique crunch standing. So squat down, right knee comes in, and then twisting your body, opposite elbow to that knee. Try to see if you can get that knee all the way up towards the chest, past the hip for sure. And also works on your balance at the same time. So this works your oblique muscles, which is the side stomach muscles there. And also you're trying to balance at the same time on the opposite leg, which is really good for your stability work. Good, 10 more seconds team, you've got this. Lifting it nice and high. Keep up that momentum for me. Good, marching on the spot. All right, we're going to that wide-legged squat. This time your left heel is lifted. Hands can be on the hips or just clasped like I am. Dropping down 50% of the way. Smooth down, smooth up. I find when the legs start to burn, people drop down very quickly and spring up very fast and actually take their time to rest a little bit at the top. Keep that momentum moving. Maximize your workout. Find your depth over time. Obviously, if it's the first time working out and your legs are starting to burn, don't have to go as deep or you can go a little bit slower if you need to. If you've done this a few times now, feel free to bring it to the depth. Because you're definitely going to get stronger over time. Good, marching on the spot there. All right, we've got the other side of the obliques, your other side stomach. Even and nice and out and balancing your right leg. Squat and twist to that left leg. Opposite right elbow coming towards the knee. Knee coming up past the hips, bringing into the chest. You're almost imagining touching that knee all the way into your chest area and you're crunching it through. Breathe out as you twist. Inhale when you drop, breathe out because you wanna empty out your diaphragm to get maximum workout in your core there. Ten more seconds to go. Good, marching it out, have a rest. All right, so we're gonna just turn that body now to the left-hand side. Remember what we did on the right side, we're gonna just repeat it here. Your right leg is now tapping in and out, staying nice and low with a bent left leg, tapping fast, running the arms like you're almost running on the spot. Great for the heart rate to start to move all your limbs. 
It's also an efficient workout to move arms and legs at the same time. If possible. Also it helps the momentum to move the leg a little bit easier as well. Running it through team, we're almost there. 10 more seconds to go here. Great work, marching on the spot. You're more than halfway. I hope you're feeling good about yourself. All right, so remember that double tap, a little bit weird move. Tap, tap, and in. Tap, tap, and in with your right toe. Toe touching and in. Tap, tap. It's almost like you've lost your footing. It's a weird move a little bit, but actually stretches out and works the back of your hamstrings. And it also forces your standing leg to hold stronger. Good stuff. Keep tapping and bring it in. Safe for the knees though, with both legs always a little bit bent. Great work, marching on the spot, marching on the spot. I'm just turning my body to face you guys. All right, we come into the arm portion now. Arms into cactus. We're gonna lift one arm up and alternate. So never show your shoulders be, your elbows actually be lower than your shoulders. Not your shoulders be lower than your shoulders. That would not make sense at all. But keep your elbows nice and high because it keeps the tension on the arms and shoulders to work a little bit harder. You will find sometimes as you get tired, your elbows might unconsciously just drop below your shoulders because that's where it likes to be. But keep it up there for maximum effort you will get a gradual burning sensation through the arms maybe as we're working it through feel free to shake it out anytime you need to good marching on the spot All right, let's twist it out. We're just gonna build up that cardio. Hands go behind the head, drop and knee in, alternating. So you sort of did this move when it was one-sided, but now we're gonna swap side to side because it helps work that cardio just a little bit of a blast before we go back to your arms. Twisting the body. So you should go a little bit quicker than before now. Lifting, dropping. Turning your whole body over to the side where the leg is bent in towards you. Nice marching on the spot there. All right, we're gonna touch the knees, ankles, then lift up. So we're gonna go down ankles, knees, ankles, lift, ankles, knees, ankles, lift. So it's like a bit of Simon Says, like knees, shoulders, knees and toes sort of movement. All right, so we go down all the way to the ankles, lift up to the knees, come back down and then lift it all the way up, blasting out that heart rate. So we're gonna go nice and quick here. And the arm sweeps above the head. This would definitely raise your heart rate and pump it up a little bit. If you keep that movement nice and nimble and fast. If it's the first time you started to work out and your cardio is a little bit tiring, feel free to slow it down. Marching it through. All right, we're back into the arms. So we're going to create this diamond shape with the hands. And we're going to bring the hands to the forehead and then lift it up above the head. In Pilates, this is called taking off the tiara. So your hands is the tiara. You're popping it onto your forehead or to your head, really. Who's wearing that tiara on their forehead? 
I guess it sits there. And then on the exhale, you push the arms back up and you're taking it off, passing it to someone tall and then bringing it back. Or putting it on the top shelf, taking your crown off, pop it onto the top shelf and then bring it back in. Fingertips always touching, thumbs and fingers, creating a nice sort of diamond or triangular shape, I would say. We don't lower the arms too low down, it stays up above the head. Nice. March it out, march it out. This helps you get your steps up. All right, so we're going to cactus arms, happy cactus, sad cactus, or go post. Flipping up, flipping down. Elbows will stay in line with your shoulders. Careful, sometimes when you get tired, you start to lift your shoulders a bit higher so it comes all the way up to your ears and you're sort of almost sinking down into the neck. Try to keep your neck nice and elongated as it is normally. Especially when the discomfort comes a little bit into your arms and shoulders. This is a great way to keep your arms toned but lean. Over time, as you get stronger, you can do the same move by holding onto some light weights, like one or two kilos. Find it's quite effective. Nice, marching on the spot. All right, so we're gonna crisscross the arms in front of us, lifting your arms up above the shoulder height. All right, so you keep it low to about chest line, shoulder line, if you're feeling tired now, but if you're feeling still good and you've got a little bit more energy to burn, let's take the arms up above the shoulders, around sort of where your nose line is, or even all the way up towards your eyebrow line, and just keep changing arms forward and back. This is also one of those moves you can do with weights. Or oh, very close to the end, team. I think we've only got one more exercise to go. And then just stay with me for a bit of a stretch. Great. Marching on the spot. All right, last move. We're taking the arms out to the side and we're just going to lift it up about five centimeters up, five centimeters down. It's almost like you're flapping your arms quite with control. Doesn't have to go too fast, preferably a little bit slower at my pace. This will definitely get those shoulders start to be activated and working a little bit more. If you can't make it the whole way through the arms, don't stress. Yeah, over time you will, without even noticing, as long as you stay consistent with your workout, you will definitely get stronger. Now, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can keep up with all my other videos. Plenty to do. If you find you still got more energy, feel free to do another video, maybe a 10 minute one. Good, roll out the shoulders, marching for your last little bit before we start to slow it down to stretch. Make sure you're stretching out your lovely muscles so it keeps that mobility up. So take your right arm across the chest, head looking in the opposite direction. All right, keeping those muscles mobile also prevents injuries over time as well. And swap the arms. Turn the head away from the hands, just elongating out the shoulders from all that flapping you just did. Turn your body towards that left side, front leg bent, back leg pressing down into the mat, stretching out your calves and back of the hamstrings. You step that foot in one little bit and bend the knees like you're almost lunging and then push the pelvis forward. That will just stretch out that hip flexor on the back leg. Good, tilt forward, front leg nice and straight. Maybe grabbing onto the toes if your hamstrings are quite flexible. Good. Flip it to the other side, do the same thing. Bend your front knee, back heel, pressing down into the mat. Nice and flat if you can get it there. Pull that leg in a little bit, drop the knee and push the pelvis forward. Tilt back, 
Grab onto the toes, stretch out your hamstrings. Good, releasing, give yourself a clap. Thank you so much for working out with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.